Hey, Harry, how you doing, man? Very good. How are you? Good, good. Good to see you. Okay, so today I will uh, host the meeting because uh, Alois and Brian cannot attend. So we do have some several items to discuss. I think uh, we can start the meeting. Oh, you're on mute, maybe. No, I can't hear you, Harry. I, we could before, but not now. It, Zoom doesn't appear to show that you're muted, which is odd. Hey, Amy, how many um, SIG and TOC, et cetera, meetings are you on per day? <laughs> uh, you know, it really depends. Um, I try to make as many of them as I can. So, yeah, it really time, depends. Time willing. Good to see all of you. Yeah, yes. time willing. Time willing, all of that. But good to see all of you. Oh, it's uh, your name. I see your name in your face all the time, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it turns out I do, too. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me now? Yay, you are back. Hello. Oh, okay. That's great. Okay, so uh, so let's start today's um, SIG app delivery meeting, and uh, this meeting will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube. So please keep yourself looking good. Okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, we do have a new project per uh, presentant in this meeting, and uh, the project is Crosta. So I will hand over the uh, screen share to uh, Gerard from uh, Cross tag community. Okay. Alrighty, cool. Thanks, Harry. Yeah, let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm going to go ahead and share my entire desktop here. So, because uh, I'm going to go across a couple different applications here. Um, do you see the agenda document right now? Yes. Yes. All right, cool. All right, then I'll go ahead and switch over to the slides then. And we can get started. All right, do you still see the slides that I've put it on full screen? Looks good. All right, thank you, Amy, for the confirmation. All right, cool. So uh, last week, we submitted a proposal to, uh, to donate Crossplane as a CNCF uh, sandbox project. And so my name is Jared. I am one of the founders of the project and a maintainer on it as well. So I'm just going to walk through some details of the proposal, talk about what Crossplane is, et cetera. And, you know, this is in the context of SIG app delivery. Um, so, you know, I know you all have a lot of experience in this space. Um, you know, a lot of these concepts won't necessarily be new, but feel free to jump in at any time if you have questions about anything and we can make this as interactive as you want. There will be time at the end for questions as well. But if you have any questions, just go ahead and hop on in. There is a direct link in the agenda doc to both this slide deck and also the pull request in the TOC repo that has the full proposal. So you can uh, play along at home too um, with uh, TOC 454. Uh, okay, so let's talk about what Crossplane is. Um, so it was, uh, we did our first uh, v0.1 release back in December of 2018. So it's been, um, been around for about a year and a half now. And uh, the same folks, uh, myself included, me and Bassam, uh, creators of the Rook project, which is another as a CNCF project that's hopefully going to be graduating soon uh, and focuses on storage orchestration. Um, we're the same folks behind the Rook project uh, or folks behind this crossplane project. Um, open source and open governance, obviously, we just updated our governance to be a little bit more inclusive uh, and allow a little bit more diversity of maintainers and participants in the project um, recently. And in terms of the architecture, it, it's, it's based on the Kubernetes control plane. So, you know, at its core, it's really a set of uh, controllers and CRDs. Um, it's not, you know, an entirely new architect and solution. 
it's running in Kubernetes, it just needs API server, controller manager, etcd, that sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, it is basically a Kubernetes add-on, you can look at it. Uh, so there's three feature, main feature areas here that we're going to dive into more details on. Um, but really, the core of the project is about provisioning infrastructure uh, for your applications that are running in Kubernetes. Um, so, you know, using the Kubernetes API or tools like Kube Control, you can go ahead and uh, use Crossplane to create instances of infrastructure and cloud provider services like uh, Amazon uh, database or a security group or you know VPC, all that sort of infrastructure, cloud infrastructure stuff. You can use Crossplane to create it. Um, you can also uh, go ahead and create and define and publish your own infrastructure APIs. We're going to get into more details on this one because I think it's really important. Um, but basically, you can uh, define what does infrastructure mean uh, in your environment and you know, how do you want to expose that infrastructure to applications to consume it and define your own API uh, and abstractions around that. Uh, so we'll get into more details on that. And also um, the, third, the third feature area here is all about running and deploying applications to use this infrastructure that we're deploying and provisioning with Crossplane. A little bit more history on the project here. So as I mentioned, the same team behind Rook is the same team that came up with Crossplane here. Our first release was in 2018, but we actually conceived of this project back in 2017, you know, while working uh, almost exclusively on Rook. And so one of the things that we really noticed in Rook is that uh, the, the volume abstraction is a really powerful concept because it basically allows your applications to define some infrastructure that they need and start consuming it on demand. Um, so, you know, the whole pattern around persistent volume claims, storage classes, persistent volumes, all that stuff. Um, we thought that that could uh, have a lot of applicability and usefulness um, in other scenarios for other types of infrastructure. Um, you know, databases, caches, clusters themselves, buckets, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so we, that's where we started with the Crossplane project. And then most recently, we have done the work uh, and through a great collaboration with Alibaba and Microsoft uh, on the open application model and the OM spec. Now Crossplane is the Kubernetes implementation of the OM spec. So you can do all the, you know, everything defined in the OM spec there to define your applications and the portability around those, et cetera. You can do those in Kubernetes environments now with Crossplane being an implementation of the OM spec. All right, so let's dive into some of the details of those three feature areas I was talking about. So the first one here is provisioning infrastructure um, you know, with, with the Kubernetes API. So the, the whole basic concept behind this is that infrastructure uh, and services and cloud providers are represented as CRDs now in, in Kubernetes with Crossplane. Um, so you can use whatever Kubernetes tool or the Kubernetes API you want to declaratively configure this infrastructure you know, instantiate a CRD, fill out its spec fields, all that sort of stuff, and, um, you know, end up with infrastructure provision for you inside the cloud providers. We started off with uh, support for GCP, for Azure, for AWS. Uh, but we've recently added, uh, the Alibaba folks have added an Alibaba provider. There's support for Rook uh, in cluster stuff, the packet um, as well, bare metal packet stuff as, as well. Um, but let's look at the diagram at the bottom here, and that's kind of puts it all together here, where a user, uh, you know, infrastructure owner or application developer, they can create an instance of one of these CRDs that represent infrastructure. They can use Cube Control, um, you know, any tool that speaks Kubernetes API. So they create an instance of that CRD. Uh, Crossplane has a whole bunch of controllers that are watching for events on those CRDs, and they'll go ahead and reconcile the desired state of that, um, like the Amazon RDS uh, CRD, that what the spec says, go ahead and make calls to Amazon's cloud through the Amazon API to make that desired state of the Amazon RDS database a reality, the actual state. So it's you know, Kubernetes controller watching CRDs, calling cloud provider APIs to make that infrastructure happen. Now, the second feature area here uh, that's kind of a new one for us, and I think this is really where some of the power of the Crossplane uh, project starts coming up for us, is about publishing your own infrastructure APIs. So, you know, as an infrastructure uh, operator or infrastructure owner, um, you know, you need to be a little bit opinionated about what does infrastructure mean in my environment? 
So CrossPane allows you to define, uh, you know, like what does Postgres mean in your environment? And, you know, what is that composed of? Because in reality, you don't just need a Postgres database. You need the networking to connect it. Um, you need some, you know, the like a resource group for it to, to be a part of. Um, so it's not just a single entity. It's, you know, the general need for infrastructure by an application actually is composed of a whole number of things underneath. So infrastructure owners can define their own abstractions for uh, their opinionated um, versions of infrastructure and publish that so applications can consume them now. Um, and that uh, example we're talking about with uh, a MySQL database in Azure, it needs not just a MySQL database, but it needs a resource group, it needs a firewall rule. And so you can define that and publish it for applications to consume. And we're gonna go into a demo on that too. So we'll see exactly what that means. But one of the benefits here is that allows you to hide the infrastructure complexity and also put some, <clears throat> some safeguards in place with policy and specific configuration that you don't want to expose the application owner. So you get control over this platform that you're developing or this API that you're publishing for your applications to be able to get their infrastructure that they need, but in a safe way that you're okay with as an infrastructure owner. And the nice thing about this is that it's all declarative. Um, there's no code behind this at all. And we'll look at the, or for, there's no code needed for the infrastructure operator to, to be able to do this stuff. And here's a picture to put that together for you here. Uh, so with those verbs we were just talking about, going from left to right, define, compose, publish, and consume. So on the left here, we're looking at, I'm an infrastructure operator and I'm gonna go ahead and define what MySQL means uh, in my opinionated environment. So to me, MySQL will mean, uh, you know, I've got multiple, I could have multiple definitions for it. So I'll say, okay, it could mean, MySQL could mean uh, an Azure MySQL, the resource group, the firewall rule, or it could also mean an Amazon RDS instance with the VPC, a subnet, security group, et cetera. These are all multiple options for what resources compose a MySQL in my environment. And then I'll go ahead and publish those so that applications running in namespaces can go ahead and say, hey, I've, my app has a requirement for MySQL. Um, please give me a MySQL. And so on demand self-service, they ask for MySQL and they can kind of influence which one do they want. And here in this example, we're saying that uh, app A wants the Azure MySQL uh, and all the components that, that's, you know, that that is composed of. Uh, and app B wants AWS, but that could be any, any other things like, uh, like fast and slow, gold and silver, cheap and expensive, whatever, you know, secure and you know, development, whatever it may be. Um, applications can ask for infrastructure on demand and this API, this, um, this platform that CrossBand allows you to define uh, will fulfill that for you. Okay, and the last feature area here is all about the application layer. So as we talked about, uh, we Crossplane now supports the open application model, which I'm sure this SIG is intimately familiar with. And uh, so that, what's cool about that is that, you know, with both infrastructure and applications, you can kind of standardize now on a single workflow, a single, you know, single um, API for that, where you can define your infrastructure, your applications, and how they'll be used, et cetera, all in a single workflow. Um, a key part of the cross-plane project from the very beginning was this idea of a separation of concerns. And that's also a key component of the Ohm spec as well. So that's why there's a very good alignment between cross-plane and Ohm, where um, you know, there's a couple different personas involved. You know, as an infrastructure operator, you want to define the infrastructure, the policy around it, what's okay, what's not okay, what you want to expose to your applications. And then application developers, they don't want to have to worry about those details, right? They want to be able to say, okay, I'm focusing on my business logic, I'm focusing on my app, and I have a general need for a database and a, and a cache. That's all they need to worry about. And then this third persona around application operators that can kind of glue those together, take up application components and fulfill them with uh, infrastructure and environment requirements. Uh, okay, so this is the three feature areas, and I think it's time for a demo to kind of start putting this together here. So let me unfold screen that. And do you see a prompt? All right, nice. So uh, I'm just on my laptop here. Simple, simple uh, scenario here. I've got a, a kind cluster up and running and uh, it's got nothing right now. Um, it's very, very basic. Um, you know, 
no pods running, uh, not much going on. But uh, with this blank vanilla uh, kind cluster, I'm gonna go ahead and install crossplane. And I'm gonna install uh, just through a Helm chart um, to get the crossplane uh, CRDs and pods up and running to be able to um, start managing and provisioning our infrastructure for us. So let's uh, wait for those to bring up. Okay, they're up already, nice, nice and quick. Um, yeah, so we have Crossbane up and running. And then I also want to go ahead and install some support for Azure as well. Uh, Crossbane has a, an extensibility uh, model where, you know, you've got the plain vanilla, vanilla Crossbane that knows what OM is, knows how to speak OM, has some basic CRDs. But then if you want to do things for Azure or AWS, you can add additional functionality there with, uh, with the, the extensions. So let's, uh, let's see if I've got Azure up and running. That's Azure still coming up right now, the support for that. But I'm going to go ahead and also, uh, I won't show this, obviously, but I'm going to go ahead and create a secret that has my Azure credentials. So I can log into the Azure portal and with you know a, a, a secret key and all that sort of stuff. And I'm going to put that into a secret right now so that Crossplane will be able to do uh, Azure operations on my behalf. Uh, let's check and see if that's up and running. Yeah, okay, so the Azure stuff's running, and then we're go ahead, gonna go ahead and create uh, you know, an Azure provider that will use my credentials and be ready to do stuff. Uh, and then one more step before we get into the meat of it here, this is all the quick startup stuff, is so I'm gonna go ahead and create a cluster role that will let Crossplane uh, use these infrastructure CRDs that I'm gonna be defining on the fly as we're going here. All right, so let's do something useful now, finally. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to define some infrastructure. So let's look at it here. Uh, I made the font bigger here, so hopefully that should be should be easy to read. Uh, but basically, I'm defining my own custom infrastructure API right now. So I'm going to say, hey, here's an infrastructure definition, and this is uh, Postgres. This is what Postgres is going to mean in my environment here as an infrastructure owner. I'm defining what Postgres is, and this is basically I'm giving a CRD template saying, hey. Create a new CRD crossplane that is called Postgres uh, SQL instance, and uh, here is the Open API v3 schema for it that allow, that specifies what configuration fields it will expose, uh, and then crossplane will take that and say, okay, cool, uh, you're defining your own infrastructure, your own infrastructure API, and now there's a new CRD that is called Postgres uh, for my example org. So now we want to go ahead and publish that too. We've defined the infrastructure, we want to publish it. And that one's really simple. That's just a, hey, take Postgres SQL, the one that I defined for my example org, and go ahead and publish it so applications can start to consume it. Now we're going to get into something a little bit more interesting, where um, you know, we haven't really said what Postgres really means. We've said, I want Postgres, I want to have a Postgres in my environment, but we haven't really said, well, what does that mean yet? So let's do two different Postgres uh, compositions. Uh, a bronze one and a platinum one. And let's, uh, so we can confirm here that we've got, uh, in terms of compositions of infrastructure in our environment, we've got bronze and we've got platinum now. So we've got two of those there ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna jump ahead real quick to kick things off because I'm gonna do real things in Azure that take a couple minutes. So let me just run a command real quick and then we'll talk through everything and make sure we understand what's going on. Okay, so that should kick everything off. Now let's talk about what we've actually done here. So we've defined uh, Postgres and now what does Postgres mean in this environment? So we've got bronze and we've got platinum. Uh, but what that means is that when somebody says that they want a Postgres instance, when an application says, I've, I want Postgres, uh, that actually means Okay, we're going to give them a resource group in Azure. We're going to give them an Azure Postgres database. We're going to give them a firewall rule to allow some ingress and connections to it. Um, and now this is just the bronze one. So this is, you know, a little cheap, slow, oh, it's only got two cores. It's general purpose, not, not too fancy. Uh, but then we can also, we're also defined, what does, what does a platinum po Postgres look like, right? In this API we're defining. Now platinum. Uh, it's going to be composed of the same things, a resource group, a Postgres database, and a firewall rule. But here, it's, it's going to be a memory-optimized Postgres instance that's going to have more memory per core. It's got 32 cores instead of just the little small two-core bronze instance that I defined. So we're basically giving applications 
the ability to, you know, on-demand self-service, create their own infrastructure, but giving them some options about as an infrastructure owner, what am I okay with? I'm okay with this bronze one, I'm okay with this platinum one, and I'm very opinionated about what that means. So the applications don't have to care uh, or know about what the details of the infrastructure they're, they're requesting are. They just know they need Postgres and they're gonna get what the infrastructure owner is okay with um, and they don't have too much control over it, which is good because you don't wanna give application owners and developers you know, every knob and direct access to the cloud provider APIs to really nearly do what they want. So we've created the, our own infrastructure API, uh, published it, made it ready for applications to consume. And now uh, we kicked that off, so it should be doing real stuff now. So I'm gonna take a look at, um, you know, underneath what's happening. So uh, my application, sorry, I, I didn't show something real quick. Uh, we also did this step here, where I, now this is the, from the persona of the application developer operator. And they've said, hey, my application has a requirement for Postgres, so please give me Postgres. And, you know, we, when I defined as an infrastructure operator, my, the API for new infrastructure that I'm defining, uh, I gave you some knobs to turn. And one of those is, uh, you know, how big do you want your database? And so here as an application developer, I'm saying, okay, I want 20 gigs uh, in my database. It's just a little, you know, test one. And uh, for which one I want, I want bronze. So I have chosen as an application that I, I need Postgres and give me the bronze one. I don't know anything else or what, to do, what that means underneath it. I don't know anything about that. So we did that. And, uh, and so that kicks off this whole sequence of machinery that says, okay, application requires Postgres. It wants the bronze one. What does that mean? Let's look up the composition. Okay, here's what bronze means. I'm going to instantiate CRDs for each one of those. This is all automation that I'm talking about. This is none of this is human stuff. So the machinery in Crossplane is instantiating the CRDs for uh, Postgres for Azure, for a resource group, for a firewall rule, all that stuff. So we're checking in on it here with cube control of getting, get my managed resources, give me all of them. And so that's giving us the resource group, the Azure Postgres, the firewall rule, et cetera. So we should see this now over in Azure. So if we refresh the page and start looking at stuff here, yep, we can see that we created a database uh, on the fly. Now my application was able to self-service its own database. Um, and it's available, it's ready to use. Uh, we created a resource group. Uh, we also created a firewall rule for the database to allow the connection in. So it looks like everything came up and is working, which is great. Uh, and here's, so here's another key aspect of this is that the application requested their own infrastructure, but then they also, how do they access it? How do they connect to it, right? And so the cross-plane machinery went ahead and published a secret as well. It contains all the information, oops, uh, all the information that the application needs to connect to it, like what the endpoint is. You know, this is all base 64 encoded right now in a secret, like everybody just normally does. Uh, but what the, what's the password? What's the username? Everything that the application needs to go ahead and connect to that Postgres infrastructure and all the other supporting infrastructure to, that it actually needs to run it and connect to it. And so let's just look at a simple pod real quick. So let me start this pod up here and uh, just to connect to the database. So here it's a very simple pod. It's saying, hey, just run uh, psql and do a select query on the current database just to connect and print something out. Not very, not very uh, fancy. But uh, it's going to take all that connection information from the secret that Crossplane uh, created uh, and published for the application here. So it's going to get the password, the username, the host, all that stuff from the secret in its environment and then securely connect to it. So if we look at the output of that um, of the pod, it should just show like a you know a, a select query output. Yep, that's all. It just showed okay, what's my current database? The Postgres database. That's what I connected to. All good. So let's put it all back together here with a real quick summary. Is that as an infrastructure operator, I define my own API, my own abstractions for what infrastructure means in my, my environment. I said, hey, this is what Postgres means. There's a couple flavors for it: the bronze one, the platinum one. I'm publishing them and making them available for applications to self-service, to get the infrastructure that they need uh, when they need it and not have to worry about the details, strong separation of concerns. They don't get to configure too many things that I'm not okay with as an infrastructure operator, but they can do it on their own. They don't have to file a ticket. 
they can just get the infrastructure they need when they need it as an application. Uh, okay, and so we're about wrapping up here. So that was the, uh, the demo. And uh, just some quick stats, you know, the CrossBand's been around for about a year and a half now. It's over 2,000 GitHub stars and over a million container downloads. Um, one of the ones I think is more interesting though too is that as we opened our governance recently, we have uh, 10 maintainers now across the project uh, from three different organizations. So we're starting to open the project up with more, uh, more open governance and you know, get collaboration and, um, and diversity of maintainers across more organizations. Uh, adopters is a section of the proposal that we focused on too. So, I mean, let's be, let's be clear here that these are mostly evaluating phase. Uh, folks are evaluating crossplane and starting to use it in their environments, but not uh, strictly taking a hard production dependency on it yet. All the details are in the uh, proposal, but uh, you know, we have some great partnerships going and some good adoption of um, you know, the crossplane uh, platform uh, with Microsoft and Alibaba and the open application model. Uh, GitLab uses Crossplane as a GitLab managed app for its auto DevOps stuff that it exposes. Um, with Red Hat, the Crossplane is available as an operator and operator hub, and um, Red Hat's promoting the usage of Crossplane in hybrid scenarios. Like for OpenShift, you have OpenShift running on premises, and you want your applications in OpenShift to be able to use cloud infrastructure. How do you do that? Um, you can now use Crossplane in OpenShift to be able to. Uh, Get and your provision and manage infrastructure and you know all the things that we've seen in this whole talk here. But for hybrid scenarios uh, like running a Kubernetes cluster on premises with OpenShift, um, and my Mastercard is starting to deploy uh, Crossplane as well and evaluate that for for usage of its platforms too. Then we've got a couple of people that are building on Crossplane uh, to be able to offer their own services to their users, but using Crossplane as the platform to deliver that too. Uh, and then here's some links to get involved in the project if you want to, uh, website, GitHub, Slack, all that sort of stuff. Um, and so that's in the deck here and we can, you know, come be part, more part of the community. And that is the end of it. So um, I appreciate everybody listening and uh, I might've gone a little fast too. So I uh, didn't get a great chance to ask questions, but now I'll shut up. And if there are any questions from the group here, I'm more than happy to address all of them. I think there's some other folks from Crossplane on the call here too. So a couple of folks to answer questions as well. Thank you, Gerard. So if you have any questions, now is a good time. And by the way, uh, please add your names to the attendee list in the SIG meetings notes. There's also a couple people from MasterCard here if you have any questions for, for us as well. Oh, cool. Hey, Ken. Good to see you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for, um, thanks for presenting and getting this into the CNCF. I mean, this is awesome. Come on. Yeah, I know that the, I uh, have a, oh, go ahead, Harry. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a question come to, come to mind and now. So, so, so let's say I, I am a, uh, I am digital ocean, right? I want to add my support to CallScan as another cloud provider. So what, what I need to do, uh, it seems like I need to do two things. First, I need to write a cloud provider for CallScan and then I need to do composition to publish my infrastructure, correct? So, so I think the question is, can I actually use my existing operator for digital ocean and use composition in CrossBand so the application can then use the public published infrastructure, which is provided by digital ocean. Is that possible? Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, it's actually a good point, Harry. Um, yeah, because I guess so there's a couple different levels of uh, collaboration or integration that you can, you can use. So, you know, the, what we've done so far is that we've wrote, written full providers like for AWS and GCP and Azure and et cetera, um, where you know, we've got controllers and CRDs defined for all of those. So they're very native cross-plane. Um, and then when you're, you know, as an infrastructure operator, when you want to like, uh, expose those infrastructure options and services to your applications, you know, you're, you're basically just defining them of, uh, you know, what are the CRDs that make up say Postgres? And so that's a good point, Harry, where you don't have to necessarily be fully integrated with Crossplane and write a Crossplane provider and you know, do the full 
you know, implementation that we've done for GCP and AWS, et cetera. Um, you could, is, it, this is all normalized on the Kubernetes API, right? So everything is a Kubernetes uh, resource, um, you know, a Kubernetes API object. So you could define, uh, you know, an infrastructure um, composition or infrastructure abstraction to say, hey, actually Postgres, what that really means here in my environment is this, uh, these other set of CRDs. If something is exposed as a Kubernetes API object, you could compose and define and publish infrastructure um, abstractions and API of, of whatever those are. So DigitalOcean CRDs or um, you know, on-premises like a MySQL operator or a Redis operator or something like that. Uh, you could define infrastructure ad made composed of those primitives as well. So yeah, that's a good point, Harry. Thank you. Just, just one, one point on that, Harry. We, um, we did a hackathon at Mastercard, and since we're very locked down, we used DigitalOcean as sort of our environment to set up a provider, and um, we leveraged the APIs and basically created a full lifecycle experience with the provider. Um, and um, the only thing we ran into is when we created a VM, we created like hundreds of them, so we had to kind of understand the API a little bit better. So we just create one or two or three. We could control how many VMs we created at one time. Um, but it, so it, the API has become a huge, I guess my point is the API has become a very important aspect of developing the provider and the ability to do life cycle within that environment. And so just um, keep in mind, API is critical to make this model really work well. Yeah, that's a great point, Ken. Yeah. Hi, uh, I have uh, two questions. Um, the first one is around the uh, permissions model. Like, uh, from what I understand, in in OpenShift, there's like AWS operators that enable you to do similar things, right? Like create AWS instances, express uh, AI, AWS resources expressed as custom resources in the cluster, but they're like namespace. Uh, scope and you can use basically different teams use different versions of the operator in different namespaces with different IAM accounts. So, uh, how do you guys handle like basically different people should have access to different cloud cloud creating different cloud resources? Um, just kind of interested in that. And the second question I guess is, um, can you create? You can you can you define the CRDs right? So you can create. Uh, cluster-wide resources as well as namespace resources via cross Uh But yeah, it's a really cool project, so thanks for sharing. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, th thanks, Daniel. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so, you know, the that's one of the nice things about standard standardizing on the Kubernetes API is that all of these infrastructure primitives and then infrastructure uh, compositions, you know, the API that you want to define that's composed of those infrastructure primitives, they're all at the end Kubernetes API objects as well. So RBAC, uh, you know, is, is fully flexible to, you know, allow particular access to, you know, this API and this verb, but not that API and not that verb. So, you know, that standardized means of exposing, um, uh, exposing all this infrastructure and locking it down or allowing access to it through RBAC is something that we, that's, that's, you know, the common way to, or the standard supported way to do that. Um, you made a good point, Daniel, about, um, about, you know, multiple versions of the operators and namespace versus cluster stuff. Uh, in general, um, you know, infrastructure primitives uh, that like one-to-one -to -one map to cloud provider resources. In general, those are almost all, I think, cluster scoped resources. So like an Amazon RDS database or uh, a Google Cloud SQL database, those are gonna be cluster scoped resources. And then when as an infrastructure operator, you choose to publish uh, this infrastructure, either the raw primitives or the uh, compositions of them with your own API, when you publish those, you're making those available, um, you know, in a new type uh, like a Postgres requirement we saw uh, as a namespaced object. So there's that kind of separation of concerns, that uh, difference in scope of access as well, cluster resources for the raw uh, cloud provider infrastructure primitives, and namespace scope to for the uh, API infrastructure API that you yourself define and want to publish to your applications. Um, but one part that I think there's a little bit more work to do, Daniel, is um, 
is around handling multiple versions uh, of these. Um, you know, there's for mostly in crossplane, you get you you know install the let's say the AWS uh, provider. You can't install two versions of it at the same time right now that are you know handling you know side by side multiple versions of the API. It's kind of one per cluster. Um, I think there's a number of, of challenges associated with that with cluster scoped resources and CRD, multiple CR versions of CRDs, et cetera. But uh, mostly right now with Crossplane, you'll get one version of each provider within the cluster, the control plane. Uh, does anybody else on the Crossplane team want to add anything to that on the call? Yeah, just a quick, quick point also that if you wanted to support, say, multiple AWS credentials that are, have different privileges, and used for different things. Um, I think you mentioned that other other approaches, other projects use uh, namespaces to to solve that. We support that at the cluster scope as well, and, and the combination of our back and the comp combination of using publishing infrastructure definitions into namespaces can you can arrive at the same thing. We just don't think we we leave the namespace scope uh, objects to be mostly application self service for application self service, not for infrastructure self service. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for answering my questions. Well, thanks, Daniel. In your RDS uh, use case, uh, can that be multi-cluster? Can I create the RDS resource in in one cluster and then export it to another cluster that will use it in its namespace? Uh, let me let me make sure I understand that. Uh, so I think. You know, there, there's one way to look about this is, um, you know, the infrastructure that you're instantiating, like the RDS database you're instantiating in AWS, and where is it going to get accessed from? Uh, maybe that's from an EKS cluster that's running in Amazon. Maybe that's from a GCP or a GKE cluster running in Google, et cetera. And so you can, uh, you know, create all of the networking um, and security uh, primitives to make that happen and allow connection from anywhere. But were you, were you asking about something else about exposing that object, like uh, you know, publishing this infrastructure type to an entirely different cluster to be able to consume it on demand, you know, instant like an application running somewhere else to instantiate it themselves outside of the control plane, or is that what you're asking? Yeah. So the pattern is where I have a master cluster that 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 manages the uh, the infrastructure. Let's say something like Kafka or even Dynamo. Um, and then you have, um, you know, multitude of clusters that, that are consumers, meaning like the apps come up and with your pattern, like you, you create a namespace and then you consume that particular um, cluster wide resource, I guess, but it's, it, you want to be able to push it using your uh, clustering to those um, clusters. I just want to know if you had that pattern implemented or if it was just well within one cluster right now. Oh yeah, I think so. I think so. And somebody else on the crossplane team can correct me if I'm wrong here. But they, that pattern is in effect where you know the, the crossplane itself is is uh, you know a, a unified single control plane where you'll have the you know the the master cluster, let's call it, or the control plane running with all the the crossplane machinery, and then you can have a number of different remote clusters or worker clusters or whatever you want to call them that are actually running workloads. And so you know you can bring up. Um, you know, your workload or your application in another cluster and have it consume the RDS instance or the Cloud SQL instance or whatever uh, over there. And that's been a kind of a common, uh, you know, uh, scenario that we've been showing off for a while. So to my knowledge, then that, that scenario you're talking about there of the control plane and then, you know, worker clusters that are actually running workloads to be able to consume this infrastructure as well is something that's supported. Okay, thanks. Okay, so if you guys have any more discussion, uh, please feel free to follow up with the maintainers. Okay, go ahead. Cool, thanks, Harry. Appreciate the, the time here to talk today. All right, so and what's the time uh, we just, can... Just out of Harry, what's kind of the next steps for this? Um, yeah, yeah. something you're yeah. going to help sponsor, or what's sort of the plan for, for cross-plane? So, yeah. yeah, so standard process is that the uh, SIG will take over the uh, project from this, after this presentation, and there will be a review based on the presentation and uh, also based on some maybe interviews with maintainers in the community. Uh, I will step back 
from this interview process because Alibaba is kind of involved in Crossman project, but I believe that Alois or Brian will be the contact person for the review uh, process. And after review process, the, pro uh, the SIG will add a recommendation uh, in the proposal uh, to reflect the facts on the uh, project and the, the, the recommendation from the SIG for example, yes or no, or there's something need to further discussion, and then pass this proposal to TOC, and TOC will be responsible to make the final decision to call for sponsors. This is the standard process right now. Makes sense, thanks. Yeah, okay, so uh, I think the next day for this um, project presentation is that the, uh, I will think of the other co-chairs of the uh, SIG to, to start the review process. As I mentioned, I will stay back, but Alois or Brian will take over that. Okay. So let's go to the next step. Uh, and uh, we do have a, another very important, uh, important uh, item for today's meeting. Uh, maybe at, Amy, you can uh, uh, call for a vote for the uh, new logos for the uh, SIG. I'm trying that. something new because, like, it's it's been like forever for this one to be able to open. Um, yeah. There will be a poll in the GitHub issue. You should go oh. on the one that you like, and I will close this on um, June sixteenth at twelve p.m. Pacific. And so our next meeting, we might actually be able to say this is the logo that we we think we have chosen. What do we think about it? And then getting some like closure on being able to say that app delivery has a logo. So. Get in there. It's uh, issue number twenty. Yes. Yeah, and just numbers. Good. Uh, it's it worked. Really Yay. <laughs> oh, I didn't know um, that you can actually pull. Yep, in you can GitHub. click on the thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So please do that, folks. And I'm I trying also something share, new. Yeah, I will also share this information to the wider community so people can pick what they're like. Okay. Thank you very much. I put and, a note into Slack yesterday about this one as well. So. Okay. That was all. Got it. <laughs> Perfect. That's a lot of options, oh. Amy. Wow. Oh, yeah. I know. That's why it was like it was turning into like a big challenge here about like the you know how many things are actually here, and we kept trying to limit it down, and it just wasn't working. So here, here are twenty three for people to be able to choose, and we can calibrate around what works. Wow, that's really awesome. Okay, and uh, yeah, I think we only need to add co for co for woes. After meeting, okay. So uh, also on, on, behalf, on behalf of the SIG, I also have a update for the Clonative Build Pack project review because uh, I think you guys might, might notice that this project is kind of um, you know uh, hung during this process because um, we don't have a clear definition for end users in the CNCF charter, but which is required for the uh, incubation level. Uh, Due diligent review. So we actually have a, a, a couple of rounds of discussion with TOC and with other six to see how we can uh, continue the process and uh, also bring up this discussion in TOC meeting yesterday. And uh, I think I got uh, a lot of very useful feedback. So the general idea is that because this is because the, the issue is maybe clone native build pack, its adopters would be mostly called providers or vendors instead of, you, in, in, instead of end users. That maybe is, is the nature of this project. So, so the conclusion that is that the SIG of app delivery will actually pass the due diligence doc to TOC without yes or no recommendation, but we will add a recommendation based on the facts to reflect, okay, what kind of adopters currently this project has and uh, what kind of cre other criteria this project already has already made and then we will pass this information to TOC. So TOC will make the final decision, maybe treat clone to build pack as a special case. So the, the idea is that the TOC will review the, pro will make the final decision case by case. Um, because we cannot change the criteria right now. It, it, it will require a long process. And, that's, and that, that means this project will be hold for a very long time. So we don't, we don't want to that happen. So we will pass this case to TOC for final decision. I don't know if any, Build pack container here, uh, but I think uh, the the process will pass to TOC very soon. Okay. Do anybody else has other item to discuss?
Sure. So it seems that all the items have been completed in this in today's SIG meeting, and uh, I'm happy to see uh, cross plan and the clone native build pack can go to the next stage. And uh, I'm also again calling for votes for the logos for the SIG app delivery. Well, thank you for attending today's meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Take care. Yeah, take care. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks.